We hear big data everywhere, right? It's kind of become a buzzword. Right. It's easy to forget how personal it really is. Oh, yeah. It's literally all the tiny pieces of information that right. we create just by going about our lives. Exactly. And the really interesting thing is how that data can come back to us mm. in ways that are beneficial. Absolutely. Like in healthcare, for example. That's where wearable sensors come in. They're kind of at the heart of it all. Right at that intersection. Yeah, where our personal data turns into something yeah. that can actually improve our health. Exactly. And for this deep dive, mm -hmm. we're really lucky to have this amazing book to guide us. Oh, yeah. This is a great one. Wearable sensors, fundamentals, sure. implementation and applications. By Edward Sazanoff. It's a deep dive into the world of wearables. And what we want to do today yeah. is break down some of the key ideas from the book in yeah. a way that's accessible. Yeah. Even if you're not an engineer or a scientist. Exactly, because this technology is becoming mm -hmm. so relevant to all of us. So relevant. Everyone should have a basic understanding. Absolutely. So let's get started. Okay, so the book starts off yeah. by talking about this ecosystem enabling digital life. Yeah, and it really struck me mm -hmm. how all these different scientific fields are converging. It's amazing. Like microelectronics. Getting smaller, yeah. more powerful. And cheaper. Cheaper, new materials with crazy properties, mm. advances in optics, and even biotechnology. Yeah, it's all coming together. To create these tiny, yeah. affordable, and yeah. super smart sensors. And they're everywhere. They're everywhere. And we don't even realize it. That's the crazy part. Yeah, we're wearing them. Yeah. They're in our homes. Mm -hmm. They're in our cars. In our cities, even. And the book makes this point oh, that yeah. they've become operationally invisible. That's the key. Right. It's and like, then think about it. You don't think about it. You just use them. You just use them. Like, yeah. I could look at my watch and see my heart rate. Exactly. Or yeah. pay for my groceries with a tap. See, that's exactly what I mean. Yeah. This powerful technology yeah. has become so user friendly. Yeah. So easy to use. That we don't even realize how complex it is. Exactly. And that leads us perfectly to mm. this idea of smart textiles. Oh, yeah. This is where it gets really cool. The book actually calls them meta wearables. Which I think is a much what? better term. It's like it captures the idea that it's yeah. not just a device anymore. Yeah. It's integrated into yeah. the fabric of our lives. Literally. Literally. So the idea is yeah. that our clothing can actually become mm -hmm. a platform for sensing and monitoring exactly. our bodies. Think about it. Yeah. Your shirt could be tracking your heart rate. Yeah. Your pants could be analyzing your gait. And it's not just monitoring. Yeah. It could be interactive, too. Yeah, like imagine your jacket warming you up. <laughs> when it senses your cold. Or your shoes adjusting their support. Based on the terrain you're walking on. It's like science fiction becoming reality. It really is. And there's this fascinating prediction. Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. From a couple of decades ago. Okay. By Park and Jar Man. Mm -hmm. They talked about how yeah. in the future. Yeah intelligent clothing mm -hmm. would have its own network address. Like an IP address. Exactly. Like every piece of clothing wow. would be part of the network. That's incredible. And you know what? what? They were right. Yeah. Look at the Internet of Things. It's everywhere. Our clothes are becoming part of this yeah. giant yeah. interconnected digital world. It's mind-blowing. It is. And we're already seeing examples of this. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like Fitbit. Yeah. Samsung Galaxy Watch. Those are already mainstream. Exactly. And what's really interesting yeah. is that Google bought Fitbit. That was a big deal. Huge deal. Yeah. What do you think that means? I think it means that wearables are going to become even more yeah. integrated into our lives. Yeah, because Google has... They have the resources, yeah. the reach to yeah. really push this technology forward. So basically, yeah. wearables are here to stay. They're not a fad. No, they're the future. The future of how we interact with technology. And how we manage our health. Absolutely. Okay, so now the book gets into yeah. this really important point. What's that? It's not enough for wearables to just be yeah. functional. Yeah. They also have to be yeah. socially acceptable. Socially acceptable. And comfortable. Comfortable. Like, it can't be awkward no. or weird. Or painful to wear. Exactly. They have to be yeah. unobtrusive. Unobtrusive, that's the word. So seamless yeah. that we don't even notice them. It's like they become part of us. Almost like a second skin. Exactly. And the book uses this example okay. of Google Glass. Oh, yeah. Remember those? Yeah. 
They were yeah. super cruel cool technology. Yeah, they could do all sorts of things. Record video. Yeah. Show you information. Mm -hmm. Hands free. Yeah, but they never really. They never took off. I know. Why do you think that was? Well, I think part of it was the, the social awkwardness. Yeah. Like people didn't know right. how to interact with someone. Yeah. Wearing Google Glass. It was weird. It was weird. Yeah. It was like yeah, yeah. they were always recording you. Right. And it just yeah. created this yeah. barrier. A barrier between people. Exactly. So the lesson here is that yeah. wearables have to be. They have to be designed. Yeah. With social dynamics in mind. It can't disrupt right. our interaction. They have to be natural pervasive, mm -hmm. but not intrusive. And that leads us to this really cool concept. Oh, yeah. Tell me about this one. Convergence in interactive textiles. Fabric is the computer. That's such a powerful idea. I know, right? It's like our clothes themselves. Yeah. yeah. Become intelligent. So instead of having yeah. separate devices, right. the technology is integrated mm -hmm. right into the fabric. And the book talks about mm -hmm. this wearable motherboard. Yeah. That's a key concept. Like a central platform yeah. that allows you to connect mm. different sensors and processors. And the beauty of it is yeah. it's modular. So you yeah. can customize it. Exactly. Like you could have exactly. a sensor for monitoring your heart rate mm -hmm. and then another one for tracking your movement. And then you can just unplug them. When you need to wash your clothes. Exactly. So the clothing itself yeah. becomes an information processing structure. It's amazing. Yeah. It really is. And the applications of this technology. Oh, they're endless. Are just incredible. The book goes through a, a bunch of examples. Like in sports. Yeah. Athletes are already using wearables. Yeah, to track their performance mm -hmm. and prevent injuries. And the technology is getting even more sophisticated. Like Athos. Athos, yeah. They have these garments yeah. that can monitor your muscle activity Wow. using SEMG. What's a SEMG? Surface electromyography. Okay. It's basically measuring the electrical signals yeah. that your muscles produce. Right in the fabric. Right in the fabric. That's incredible. And then there's sensoria. Yeah. It makes smart socks. Smart socks? Yeah. What do they do? They track your steps, okay. your cadence, okay. how your foot lands. Wow. So they can tell you yeah. if you're running properly. Exactly. They can help you and improve your form. Prevent injuries? Prevent injuries. Exactly. It's not just sports. No wearables are being used in yeah. all sorts of fields. Like public safety. Oh, yeah. This is a big one. Yeah. The book talks about mm -hmm. this project called Protex. Protex. Yeah. It's a wearable system mm -hmm. for first responders. Like firefighters? Firefighters. Police officers. EMT. So it can monitor their... It can monitor everything. Yeah. Heart rate, breathing, right. temperature, even the environment. Like if there are yeah. toxic gases present. Exactly. So it can help keep them safe. Absolutely. In really dangerous situations. And it's not just Protex. Oh. There's also the Zephyr Performance System. From Medtronic. Yeah, Medtronic is a big company oh. in uh -huh. the medical device space. And they're using wearables. To monitor first yeah. responders, mm -hmm. military personnel. Yeah. Even athletes. It's all about protection. Protecting people. Protecting people. In high-stress environments. Exactly. And then there's the medical applications. Oh, yeah. Wearables are really changing the game in medicine. It's amazing how they're being used in orthopedics. Orthopedics is a great example. Yeah, they can monitor yeah. patients recovering from injuries. Exactly. Like if you break your arm. Or have surgery. Yeah, they can track your range of motion. You know, your muscle activity. Yeah. Even your skin temperature. And they can do this yeah. continuously in yeah. real time. So doctors and therapists. Get a much better understanding yeah. of how the patient is healing. So it's not just yeah. like a one-time yeah. checkup. Right. It's ongoing yeah. monitoring. And the data they collect. Oh, it's incredible. It's so detailed. They can measure body motion, mm -hmm. joint angles, mm -hmm. skin temperature, mm -hmm. skin conductance. Wow. Biopotentials. Like? ECG. Okay. EMG. Mm -hmm. EEG. Wow. Arterial pulse. Yeah. Oximetry. Even chemical analyte, like in Mine's sweat fair. tears. Wow. Urine. Urine. Wow. That's amazing. And it's not just the body itself. What else do they track? The environment. Okay. Things like ambient light, mm. temperature, yeah. humidity, uh -huh. atmospheric pressure. Alt. Even GPS location. So they can see where the mm. patient is and how that might be affecting their recovery. It's like having a complete picture. Of the patient's healing journey. That's incredible. It really is. Okay, so now yeah. let's talk about a challenge. What's that? That comes up a lot with wearables. Okay. Power. Oh, yeah. Power is a big one. Yeah, we're so used to 
our phones dying. Exactly. Our laptops needing to be plugged in. It's like we're constantly yeah, tethered to the grid. And batteries yeah. are kind of a limiting factor. They're bulky. Yeah. They have a limited lifespan. And they can be dangerous. Especially if they're damaged. So the book talks about mm -hmm. how researchers are exploring yeah. new ways to power wearables. Like energy harvesting. Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. So energy harvesting is basically yeah. capturing energy from the environment. Right. Like from light yeah. or movement. Or heat. Even heat. Wow. And then using that energy yeah. to power the wearable. So it's like yeah. a self-charging device. Ah, that's amazing. And there are different types of energy harvesting, I, okay. like piezoelectric energy harvesting. What's that? So piezoelectric materials yeah. generate electricity yeah. when they're subjected to pressure okay. or mechanical stress. So if you had a piezoelectric material yeah. in your shoe... Every time you take a step. It would generate electricity. Exactly. That's so cool. It is. And then there's... Yeah. Triboelectric energy harvesting. To go electric. It's a fancy word. Okay. But basically it's about yeah. generating electricity. From? Friction. Friction. Yeah, like when two materials rub together. Okay. So you could imagine yeah. a wearable that generates power. Just from you moving around. Exactly. That's incredible. And then, of course, there's... Solar power. Solar power, yeah. Yeah. That's a classic. Then it's challenging. Yeah, because you need a light yeah. source. Right. And the wearable might not always... Be exposed to light. Exactly. But researchers are working on more efficient solar cells yeah. that can capture energy yeah. even in low light conditions. So maybe one day yeah. our clothes will be able to power themselves from the sun. Just like plants. <laughs> that would be amazing. It would be revolutionary. Okay, so now yeah. let's move on to another cool concept. Sport attainment. Sport attainment. What is that? So basically it's about using wearables yeah. to enhance the spectator experience. Okay. Like imagine you're watching a football game okay. and you're wearing a special shirt okay. that's connected to the yeah. quarterback's uniform. Wow. So as the quarterback yeah. runs and throws, yeah. you feel. I feel? Yeah, you feel the impact, uh -huh. the oh. G-forces. That's amazing. Your heart rate sinks yeah. up with the quarterback's heart rate. It's like you're actually in the game. Exactly. That's so cool. And it's not just yeah. limited to football. You yeah. could imagine this for any sport. Car racing. Car racing, yeah. Yeah. You could feel yeah. the vibrations of the car. Wow. The acceleration. That would be amazing. It would be like, you're right there. Yeah, in the driver's seat. It's blurring the lines mm, between yeah. spectator. Just participant. Exactly. Well, it's a whole new level. <laughs> of immersive entertainment. Okay, so the book makes this really important point yeah. about how yeah. wearable technology isn't just about... It's not just about gadgets. Yeah. It's uh, about a whole system. Exactly. It's about material yeah. science, mm. electrical engineering, mm. computer science, design, yeah. manufacturing... All these things. ...have to come together yeah. to create a successful wearable. And that's why the book emphasizes mm -hmm. the need for a transdisciplinary approach. Transdisciplinary, uh -huh. meaning that researchers from uh -huh. different fields need to work together. Yeah. Collaborate. Share their knowledge. Exactly, because no one person hmm. can be an expert in all these different areas. So it's about... Breaking down silos. Yeah. And working across disciplines. To create something truly innovative. That's the key. Okay, so now... Yeah. The book takes this really interesting leap oh yeah tell me about this from wearables implantables implantables yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. taking the technology to the next level yeah inside the body exactly and the book focuses on this concept of regenerative bone scaffolds regenerative bone scaffolds yeah it sounds complicated you what are they so basically yeah. they're implants okay that are designed to stimulate bone growth oh wow so if you have a yeah. bone injury yeah. or a defect yeah they can implant the scaffold. The scaffold. And it up. helps the bone to heal. Exactly. And what's really cool is that these scaffolds are designed to be yeah. bioresorbable. Bioresorbable. Meaning right. that they gradually dissolve over time. Over time. So they don't have to be surgically removed. That's right. The body just absorbs them. Absorbs them. That's amazing. And there are different types of scaffolds. Okay. Some are made from yeah. synthetic materials. Okay. Like polymers. Yeah. Or ceramics. And others are made from yeah. natural materials. Like, like collagen oh, or bone minerals. And they can even be customized. Yeah. 
yeah. to the patient's specific needs. Exactly. They can use yeah. CT scans yeah. to create a 3D model of the bone defect and then print a scaffold that fits perfectly. It's like yeah. 3D printing for bones. That's incredible. And what's even cooler is yeah. that they can load these scaffolds yeah. with drugs or oh. growth factors that help the bone to heal. Exactly. So it's like a targeted delivery system. Right to the site of the injury. That's amazing. It's like a tiny yeah. pharmacy. Right inside your body. It's a future of medicine. So now let's shift gears a bit okay. and talk about wearables hmm. for Cardiovascular health. Cardiovascular health. This is a huge area. Yeah, because heart disease Rain. is... A leading cause of death. Yeah, so being able to monitor yeah. your heart health is critical. And wearables are yes. making it easier than ever. To do that. Like the book talks about mm -hmm. how traditional medical devices yeah. can be bulky. And uncomfortable. Yeah. And they're not always good yeah. at detecting transient events. Transient events. Yeah, like yeah. atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation. Or a heart attack. That yeah. happens outside of a hospital setting. So wearables are... They're much better yeah. at catching these events. Because they're yeah. continuously monitoring. Right. And one of the key technologies here... Is PPG. PPG. Photoplethysmography. Okay. It's a mouthful. It is. So basically, yeah. it's a way to measure... Yeah. Heart rate. Yeah. Using light. Using light. Yeah. They shine a light okay. into the skin. Yeah. And then they measure yeah. how much light is reflected back. And that tells them the heart rate. Exactly. And PPG sensors yeah. can be incorporated into lots of wearables. Smart watches, so, yeah. fitness yeah. trackers. Yeah. Even rings. Rings. Yeah. There's this ring. Okay. That was developed by okay. a team at the University of Tokyo okay. that can measure. Yes, blood pressure just from your finger just from your finger that's incredible and they're also yeah ear worn devices yeah, like earbuds exactly they can track your heart rate and even your blood oxygen levels wow and ppg sensors yeah can also be integrated into eyeglasses eyeglasses yeah, i've seen those yeah they're pretty cool yeah it's like you don't even have to wear anything extra exactly it's just your glasses and the book mentions yeah. how eyeglasses are actually a really good platform yeah. for PPG sensors. Yeah, because they're that already close to your face. Max that. And they're relatively stable. So you get a good signal. And they've even been used with oh, EEG, EEG, electroencephalography, okay. to measure brain activity. Wow. So they can look at yeah. how your heart rate yeah. and your brain activity. It's related. Exactly. It's fascinating. It is. And it's just the beginning. Yeah. I think we're going to see more and more of these sensors yeah. integrated into our everyday lives. Exactly. Okay. So the book then takes us yeah. inside the body okay. and talks about wearables for the GI tract. The GI tract. Yeah. The gut. The gut. gut. <laughs> this is a really interesting area. Yeah. Because it's a challenging environment. It's harsh. Yeah. It's acidic. Mm -hmm. It's full of bacteria. But it's also a really important part. Of our health. Yeah, our gut health. Is linked to yeah. so many things. Our immune system. Our mental health. Even our weight. So being able to monitor yeah. the GI tract. Is really important. And wearables are starting to make that possible. Like the book talks about mm -hmm. these ingestible sensors. Ingestible sensors. You swallow them. You swallow them. And they travel through your digestive system. They collect data. Data about? About the pH. Okay. The temperature. Mm. The pressure. They can even take pictures. Pictures. Yeah, it's like a tiny camera or traveling through your gut. That's wild. It is. Yeah. And this data can be used to Wait. diagnose so, and even treat. Treat. What yeah. kind of conditions? Conditions like irritable bowel syndrome. IBS. Crohn's disease. Yeah. Ulcer. Wow. Even cancer. So these ingestible sensors are like little doctors. Traveling through your gut. That's a great analogy. And what's really exciting is yeah. that they're developing yeah. therapeutic wireless capsule endos. 